Hi everyone, got two drones today, the DJI Phantom Standard and the Mavic Pro. It's about a third of the price. What's the actual difference in the specs between the two? Hello guys, Ian in London again here. And as you saw today, I'm talking about the Phantom 3 Standard. Um, I've had people get in touch struggling to justify spending a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars on uh, a Mavic Pro which ultimately is uh, a lot to spend on a toy that's pretty easy to crash. I can't really argue with that, I've already lost one. So uh, today what I thought I'd actually do is go through the specs of this. Um, it's only around 400 uh, pounds or dollars, so just over a third of the price, um, but it's still a very, very capable little drone indeed, and it's capable of taking extremely good pictures and video. So what exactly do you get or miss out on when you go for the cheaper option? So, both of these are GPS based and have got high definition cameras on board. So what exactly are you missing out on if you go for the cheaper option? Well, the biggest difference of course is size. Does size matter to you? Because if it does, you may as well stop watching this video and head off and buy your Mavic. There really is no beating the convenience of the Mavic folded up. It fits into any small DSLR bag and it's just a small part of your hand luggage on a flight instead of being the hand luggage. When it's packed away, the standard case is way bigger. But if you're flying it near your home or from the car, is this actually a major issue? Especially as most cases double up as backpacks and you can easily walk some way with them. So the other most important thing I guess is gonna be the camera. Uh, both the Mavic and the Standard have their camera mounted on a three axis gimbal. What that means is that as the drone is twisting and turning in the wind as it's flying, the camera itself stays perfectly aligned, which means your video is going to be perfectly smooth. Uh, the camera that's actually used on the standard and the Mavic is very, very similar. Both of them recording onto removable micro SD cards. Both cameras are a half inch sensor and they actually shoot the same 12 megapixel resolution with the same ISO range. In fact, the only difference is in video. The Mavic can shoot at full 4K ultra high definition at a higher frame, frame rate of 60 or even 120 frames per second compared to the Phantom Standard's 2.7 high definition video. Keep in mind that 2.7K though is still a higher resolution than you get off a Blu-ray disc which is at 1080p. So you have to ask yourself do you really need a higher resolution than a Blu-ray? And remember only high-end Macs and PCs with dedicated graphics cards can usually handle editing and playing anything above 1080. So either camera is going to produce pretty stunning video and pictures that are going to be good enough for most people. So the remotes are pretty different in size as well. Obviously the Mavic's remote is a lot smaller and clips onto your phone. The standard remote is a lot larger. It can uh, be modified quite easily to hold a small tablet, which will make life a lot easier for seeing what's going on in the app and um, through the camera. How good is your eyesight? Uh, the standard uses the older DJI Go app as opposed to the DJI Go 4 app. The 4 app has got a few extra functions. I'll go through those um, in a minute or two, but don't be misled. The older standard app has, is very functional and uh, has got more than enough uh, features to make sure you can get the video footage that you want. So next up, flying. Well, this is where we finally get some differences, but again, not as much as you might think. Flight times are both around the 25 minute mark. The Mavic is smaller and lighter, but it has a smaller battery. So it ends up with pretty similar times to the Phantom. DJI hard code a maximum altitude of around 500 meters or 1600 feet into both models. So that's fixed. And keep in mind that the FAA and the UK CAA both have the same uh, maximum height limit of 400 feet. Speed isn't that different either. Both are happy flying around the 25 to 35 mile an hour mark. Uh, yes, the Mavic has sports mode that lets you go up to about 43, 44 miles an hour. But frankly, I'm not really sure why you'd want to be flying that fast. Range is where the Mavic leaves the standard standing. On an open field with little wind, the maximum range I ever achieved on the Phantom was around 800 meters or half a mile. Throw in some trees and that range can halve. The Mavic uses a completely different radio system. And even if you don't get the official spec range of four miles or 6,000 meters, you'll still enjoy a far stronger signal at shorter ranges with fewer dropouts than the standard. Let's be clear though, 
Either way, you will still enjoy great flying with the standard and with a typical trouble-free range of up to half a mile in most conditions, that's probably enough for most videos and pictures. So the Mavic has got a few extra safety features that you will not find on the standard. Um, might not be as big an issue as you think, I don't know, you, you, you make that call. Uh, two of the main biggest features are the forward facing collision avoidance sensors and also the downward facing uh, landing protection sensors. Um, these are both designed to uh, stop you crashing into somebody or a tree or to make sure that when you're landing the Mavic you're landing on suitable terrain and it doesn't fall over and damage the propellers. Um, that said, you'll be flying sideways quite often um, or even backwards to get some decent video footage and uh, I have to say that the lack of um, sensors on the back or the side kind of seems like a bit of an oversight to me. So, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, um, these are going to be useful. They're going to stop you hitting a tree sooner or later or a person, but it's not the, um, it's not the be all and end all. So lastly, you also have the intelligent flight modes. Again, the Mavic beats the standard here, but again, the standard still has some very useful modes, including point of interest for circling and keeping the camera focus on a central point, as well as follow me mode that tracks your position as you move. The Mavic does have some useful modes that the standard doesn't, perhaps one of the most useful being tripod mode. That slows your controls right down, allowing you to fly quite easily through difficult terrain like woodland. But at the end of the day, it's like an automatic camera. How many of those pre-programmed modes do you end up using? Um, thank you, Pigeon. So there you go, a few things to think on there. Ultimately, the uh, Mavic is way smaller. It's got some anti-collision features that the standard hasn't. Uh, but both of these are very, very decent uh, drones indeed. And uh, the standard will still have the same GPS stability that the Mavic has got. You take your hands off the uh, remote and it's just going to sit there and hover, just like the Mavic does. Uh, it's going to give you very decent pictures and uh, very decent video. So to me, if you're starting out in this area and you want a very decent drone that's going to take really decent video and, uh, and pictures and uh, set you up uh, with, with good practice, the standard is an absolutely fine model to go for. As I said, just over a third of the price, so that's a, a fair bit of money you're going to be saving. Ultimately, that's it. You pay your money, you take your choice. So there you go guys, that's my take on the differences between the uh, Phantom Standard and the Mavic. Um, if you are aware of any other differences or you disagree with anything I've said or agree, just send me a message. Um, I make these videos for a bit of fun to try and help you out as well. Uh, if you like them, then subscribe, tick the little bell uh, so you get notified. Send me a message whenever you want. I normally get back pretty soon. And um, as ever, have fun and happy flying. Cheers.